Testing? Yes, thank you very much for that great introduction and thank you to the organizers of this event. Um, we have a lot of distinguished speakers uh, today. Uh, of course, Richard Hoagland, as I'm sure you all know, and uh, Richard Dolan, Timothy Good, Ed Grimsley. I feel like I'm opening for the Rolling Stones. <laughs> and who remembers the first act, right? But um, I'll try to make this memorable for you. We're talking about the origins of the secret space program. And I'm going to introduce to you some things of which you're probably already very familiar, and yet in a different way, perhaps, than you're used to thinking about it. So don't be dismayed if at the beginning this does not seem relevant, because I will show you how and why it is. A seminal event for me in the secret space program began in June of 1947. No, I wasn't around in June of 1947, but historically it was a seminal event. And many of you have heard of the Maury Island Affair, a very strange, bizarre uh, incident that took place on the Pacific Northwest of the United States. Shortly after Kenneth Arnold, a pilot, gave us the term flying saucer that month, there was a UFO sighting. In this sighting, UFOs evidently uh, crashed, uh, rained debris down upon some civilians, killed a dog, according to the story, wounded a child, according to the story. And it led to a chain of events that are very, very unusual, and yet are evidence of something that took place 20 years later that shows us there was a deep connection between the UFO story, as it was promulgated back in the 1940s, and very serious political and military events of the next 20, 30 years. So, Maury Island Affair, there's a UFO sighting shortly after Kenneth Arnold gave us the famous flying saucer story. And a man that we know as Fred Crisman claimed that he, he had been involved in that incident. He claimed that people had been hurt, that he had pieces of the UFO. And what happened was individuals of the United States uh, Army Air Force at the time, visited Crisman and his partner, Mr. Dahl, and retrieved pieces of this so-called debris of the UFO. They got on a plane, the plane crashed, and both of these Air Force officers died. These are probably the first two uh, victims, mortalities associated with the UFO phenomenon. The first two, there were many more since then, as any student of UFO history knows. So Fred Crisman is this strange guy, you know, a strange background. No one knows too much about him. He seems to have been some kind of confidence man, some kind of criminal, a crook, but maybe also an intelligence agent. There is evidence that there were uh, intelligence connections to his background. He was also somebody I like to call a wandering bishop, and I'll get to that story in a minute, because this is a striking aspect of this whole field that people have not covered because they don't understand it. Fred Crisman, 1947, seminal event in UFO history. He shows up again 20 years later, being investigated by a district attorney, Jim Garrison, in New Orleans, because of his alleged role in the Kennedy assassination. We'll come back to that in a minute. One of the people investigating the Maury Island affair and all of the UFO incidents that were taking place in the Pacific Northwest in 1947, in the months before and after the famous Roswell crash, was this man, FBI special agent in charge, stationed in Butte, Montana. He was in charge of a bunch of files we call the SM-X files. According to the FBI's own documentation, UFO matters were classified as SM-X, security matter-X. These were the original X files. This man's name is Guy Bannister. Guy Bannister is a man who will come up again in our discussion 20 years later as a suspect in the Kennedy assassination. If you saw the movie JFK by Oliver Stone, this was Guy Bannister, the actor playing Guy Bannister. Now we come to another man called Jack Martin. Jack Martin's real name is Edward Suggs. He worked as an investigator for Guy Bannister. He was another bishop. We'll get to that story in a bit. 
He's probably the same guy as the name that comes up in the files of the Office of Special Investigations of the military as Agent Jack S. Martin, who was investigating UFO incidents in California in 1949. In the movie JFK by Oliver Stone, Jack Lemmon plays Jack Martin. I'm showing you these photographs from the film, so you get a kind of context if you've seen the film. You know that we're talking about real people, real individuals, and their real influence. Of course, Oliver Stone does not go into the UFO aspect of this case. These photographs have never be been seen before in public. You're the first people in the entire world that is actually seeing these photographs because they're photographs that were given to me personally by a man who was involved with Jack Martin. Jack Martin, the Jack Lemmon character in JFK, the man involved, they say, in the Kennedy conspiracy in New Orleans, was also, in addition to being an investigator, in addition to being possibly a man investigating UFO incidents in California, in addition to being heavily involved in the group around Lee Harvey Oswald in New Orleans in 1963, was also a bishop in a church, in a weird church, in a church that no one had ever heard of before, in a church that even Jim Garrison didn't understand in his own documentation, in his own writings, going back to uh, the House Select Subcommittee on Assassinations when the United States government was going through an investigation of the assassinations in the 1970s, Jim Garrison wrote a note, copies of which I have, saying, look into this church stuff because I don't understand it. Well, there's Jack Martin, dressed as a priest in the 1970s after the Kennedy assassination. His friend and associate was David Ferry, David Ferry and Jack Martin both worked for Guy Bannister. David Ferry, former Eastern Airlines pilot, a rabid anti-communist, very much involved in anti-communist activities. He is another bishop of the same church as Jack Martin. And of course, he knew Lee Harvey Oswald, as we know, in the Civil Air Patrol. In the movie, that was David Ferry, an uh, unforgettable guy in a fake wig and fake eyebrows. Um, talking about enigmas wrapped in mysteries, wrapped in puzzles, wrapped in all kinds of things. So this is the David Ferry character that um, made famous in the film. And this is an actual photograph of David Ferry dressed again as a priest, as Jack Martin was. We have co-conspirators in the Kennedy assassination, as we will see, ties back to the UFO and the space program, who were involved in a strange church, a church that didn't really exist except on paper. And this is the church, the American Orthodox Catholic Church. If you review the FBI files, uh, all of the investigations that were undertaken for the Warren Commission, and later by the House Subcommittee in, 19, in the 1970s, this name will keep coming up, and no one does any background check on it, no one goes any further. Members of this church included a man called Profeta, we'll get to him in a second, David Ferry, Jack Martin, a man called Carl Stanley, who was mentioned in the FBI files, uh, Tommy Jude Baumler, Thomas Beckham, these are all names familiar to uh, researchers in the Kennedy assassination. They were all members of this church, most of whom were bishops in the church. The church had a lot of bishops, not many priests, and no congregations. Seriously. Just bishops, no priests, no congregations. Rarely did they have a building. This photograph was taken in the only building I ever knew that housed the American Orthodox Catholic Church in the Bronx, where I'm from. And I knew the church personally. I knew these individuals personally. I knew this guy, uh, this guy right here. That's Profeta, the guy who created the church. I knew him. And I was a member briefly of this group because I live practically next door. And there's a long story, and I won't get into it now. I won't bore you with it. but. The other names on this list are extremely important. Ferry Martin, we already know, involved in the Kennedy assassination conspiracy, at least according to Jim Garrison. Tommy Jude Baumler was a, uh, a lawyer in New Orleans. And his claim to fame, as we found out only about a year ago, was that he was the man who incorporated another church, this one called the uh, Process Church of the Final Resurrection, of the Final Judgment, rather, Process Church of the final judgment. This was the group that was implicated, rightly or wrongly, in the Charles Manson family, in uh, possibly the Bobby Kennedy assassination, the, it goes on and on. There are all these churches that swim underneath the radar 
that had connections to intelligence agencies, the military, and as we will see, to the space program. This was Profeta. I knew this guy personally, a Ukrainian Orthodox priest who left the Ukrainian Orthodox Church to, dis to create this uh, church of his own, the American Orthodox Catholic Church. He was picked by Thomas Dewey as the White House chaplain. Uh, there was an election between Harry Truman and Thomas Dewey. Everyone thought Dewey would win. Dewey was the Republican. Truman was the Democrat. Truman won by a narrow margin. And Profeta once showed me the letter that he got from Thomas Dewey appointing him as White House chaplain when Dewey thought he had won the election. This is how politically prominent and important he was. On the board of directors of the American Orthodox Catholic Church was J. Edgar Hoover, the head of the Federal Bureau of Investigation of the FBI, the man who gave us the X-Files and Guy Bannister and all the rest. J. Edgar Hoover was a member and on the board of directors of this phony church. Another member was Christopher Maria Stanley. He's now known as Saint Christopher Stanley. He was canonized by the guy who took over when he died. Close associate of all these guys, Ferry Martin tried to implicate him in the Kennedy assassination. He tried to implicate them in the Kennedy assassination. When Profeta had created the American Orthodox Catholic Church, he summoned all the other bishops who had been bishops with him in this church to go to New York and prevent, uh, present their, their bona fides, their bona fides, their credentials to him and to, to Hoover. The only one who obeyed this was Carl Stanley, Christopher Maria Stanley. Christopher Stanley goes to New York, he goes to Profeta, he signs on, he goes back to his home in Kentucky, he's dead less than a month later, and only two weeks after the death of David Ferry, the mysterious death of David Ferry, another bishop in the same church. Suddenly the bishops of this church were all being killed. They were all dying under mysterious circumstances all within a few weeks of each other. This story you have not heard before because no one knows what to do with the material. No one knows what to do with this information. Uh, so when it comes to churches and guys in funny hats, you know, there is some degree of mystery out there and confusion. This is the organization as I, over the years, uncovered it, starting with uh, our friend Profeta over there to Christopher Stanley, to David Ferry, to Jack Martin. These were all guys implicated in the Kennedy assassination, and they all wore funny hats. The connection was this, another funny hat, that's J. Edgar Hoover in his Masonic Shriner fez, because he was a Freemason, as I think we all know. So there's J. Edgar Hoover to Guy Bannister, the guy who investigated the UFOs in 1947, the guy who was writing up all these telexes and uh, letters headlined SM-X file, UFO sighting here, UFO sighting there. Down here is uh, Fred Crisman. He was the guy that Bannister was allegedly investigating. And next to Crisman, there's Profeta again. Profeta, who was on the same board of directors of a church as J. Edgar Hoover. All these people working in concert, all these people working together, a phony church, mysterious goings on, and really weird hats. So what does all this have to do with the space program? You're sitting there thinking, Okay, this is all very strange, but what are we here for? Well, let's fall back a little bit. We'll start to see the threads come together. In the United States, the space race began on Halloween 1936. And you're looking at this charming group of individuals down there, relaxing in front of a rocket. These were America's first rocket scientists. People like Jack Parsons, uh, Theodore von Karman. And this is the launch at Arroyo Seco in California in October 31st, 1936. The very first launching of a, of a rocket by American space engineers. Jack Parsons has a crater on the moon named after him. Jack Parsons was a co-founder of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL, at Caltech in, in uh, California. He was a follower of Aleister Crowley, the Aleister Crowley, the infamous uh, magician who created his own cult, his own religion, uh,